Yes. Everybody, I think we're I think we're loud and clear now. Everybody heard the intro? We're good. Okay. Can you hear me, Jeff? Yes, sir. Okay, we'll get going then. Thank you so much, uh, Jeff. Uh, and as Jeff uh, stated, uh, uh, thank you all for joining us this evening. Uh, it is true that I was uh, entertaining some visitors for Continental uh, this afternoon that uh, were from out of the country. And yes, I guess I was being paid to fly them around in the Stearman and uh, uh, get them exposed to that type of, uh, of environment. And I'd just like to take a moment to say what a wonderful country that we live in, uh, having those freedoms to roll an airplane out of the hangar and fly around and do what we want to do. Uh, many of these uh, visitors from uh, foreign countries that were there couldn't believe that we could do that without filling out paperwork and forms and permits and, and things like that. So what a wonderful uh, country that we live in. I'd also like to again thank Jeff and Social Flight for making things like this possible. The fact that it's free uh, is, is even more incredible in the job that they're doing to help us uh, communicate uh, with each other in, in, in the neat pl places that there are to fly and do things uh, with regards to aviation. So thank you, Jeff, for that. Uh, we'll get started this evening into aircraft uh, engine management, flight management. It's funny, when I was out flying this afternoon in the Stearman, I was uh, actually thinking about this uh, presentation and, and, and about this topic because Believe it or not, I, I do fly the Stearman and fly at Lena Peak. Um, and I, I do it without a, all the JPI engine monitors and, and things like that. Uh, it's real, uh, really, really complicated how I do it. I pull it back the mixture till it begins to run rough and then uh, enriching it till it runs smooth. And if you plot that, that's, uh, that's pr probably Lena Peak and uh, but it's hard to tell whether we're actually in a best economy mode, but it does save fuel, it makes my wife happy. So uh, and it also reduces carbon deposits and things like that. But we'll jump right in tonight and, and talk about uh, operating our engines and how to operate their engines. Uh, hopefully we can uh, straighten out some, some confusion that may be from, from last week. Um, and I, that's why I wanted to do this in two parts because uh, some of the terminology we're going to review and then we'll get into the, uh, the nitty gritty of it. And also, we'll be using that Lena Peak simulator that I debuted last uh, week and uh, our last time we were together and, and we will uh, we'll look at that in detail as far as doing some exercises with it. Uh, yes, we intend to make that available. Uh, no, it is not for release just yet. Uh, we Again, it's going through legal review and, and, and things like that. For those of you who are attorneys, you certainly understand that, and uh, uh, we, will, we hope to make it available. The uh, particular uh, engine in the simulator is an IO550N that you find in a Cirrus SR22. Some of the charts that I'll talk about tonight are for uh, an IO550B, uh, that you'd find in a bonanza. But a lot of the, a lot of the principles and everything that we talk about are going to be the same. So I want to review a couple of terms, maximum recommended cruise, red zone, detonation, and then engine parameters. Remember, maximum recommended cruise is not to be confused with maximum continuous power. And I've got a chart later on in the presentation that will hopefully uh, uh, show the difference in, in that. In a full rich condition, we have uh, a maximum continuous power, but maximum recommended cruise, remember, is the point at which at or below that cruise power setting, we can do whatever we want with the red knob, and we cannot inflict detonation, and the engine is tested there for durability. Can you run Lena Peak above that? Certainly you can. 
Uh, we can't recommend it as long as I'm wearing a Continental shirt, and I do have a Continental shirt on this evening. Uh, I can't tell you to operate outside of that envelope, but there are programs, there are classes, and there are a lot of research that people have done that uh, can, can allow you to operate safely above those engine parameters, but just remember you don't have those uh, detonation margin uh, safeties that are built into the engine when we certified it. So you have to know really what you're doing to do that. If you're at or below maximum recommended cruise, there is no red zone. There is no area for which you have to worry about peak pressures and you have to you know, worry about detonation even on a hot day. Um, and, and just to talk a minute about peak pressures, that's a, a lot of area controversy with regarding the peak pressures that if I run my engine at best power, I'm going to strain it, I'm going to stress it, I'm going to kill it and prematurely well, uh, wear it out. And that's simply not the case. Um, in fact, the, the, the combustion pressures are, what are, are uh, a, a variable that we use in designing the engine and we expect combustion pressures and a certain amount of combustion pressures to help uh, squeeze the rings against the cylinder walls and to uh, close valves and things like that. So combustion pressure is not a four-letter word, uh, and, uh, and we'll talk about that a little, little more here in the presentation. Detonation, that is a four-letter word. That's something we definitely want to avoid. We don't, we, we don't want to, uh, to detonate our engines because, number one, can result in an engine failure. Number two, it can be extremely costly to have to IRAN inspect and repair as necessary, overhaul an engine that has been subjected to detonation. In fact, I'm working with a customer right now that leased his airplane back to a, a group of people. The airplane uh, was uh, turbo normalized and uh, leased it back, and the engine was operated improperly and over-boosted and ran in incipient detonation for quite some time, and, and uh, it cracked the crankcase. And, and the number two, number three bearing saddles were cracked. And uh, I've researched with, some, with uh, many colleagues in the industry about that. Uh, we found no manufacturing defect, but we did, we did could determine through the download of the uh, data that the engine uh, certainly had been uh, ex ex susceptible to extreme uh, uh, pressure. So uh, we have to be very, very careful about detonation and uh, incipient detonation. Detonation is an explosion in the cylinder. When you think about these engines running, uh, you know, a lot of times we, we uh, I guess when we were young working on our, our motorcycles or our tractors or our cars at young age, we, we learned the four cycles of an internal combustion engine, intake, compression, power, exhaust, and we always thought of that ignition as a bang and it blew the piston back down. That's really not what's happening. It's actually a very controlled burn and it's more of a burn and swoosh, a burn and increased pressure and swoosh. It's not a bang. Detonation is a bang, and it does result in extreme pressures, and it can do damage to bearings. It can stress crankshafts. It can erode the piston if it goes too far. It can actually burn the periphery of a piston and cause a lot of, uh, a lot of damage. And also tonight, we're going to review some engine parameters and terminology that you need to make sure that, uh, that you're talking to your mechanic with. And, and, and asking those questions. You know, this is a several part webinar that we've done with Social Flight over the uh, last couple of months. I've enjoyed every evening of it, and, uh, and uh, if it were up to me, I'd, I'd, I would set aside my Wednesday night, and, and this would be our Wednesday night prayer meeting together to talk about engines and, and talk about how to run our engines and, and take care of our engines and save, uh, save uh, money uh, all along the way. But engine parameters is very important, and I want to try to tie that all together with those uh, former uh, uh, or previous, I uh, should say, webinars that we did uh, to tie that together, again, going back to asking the right questions 
of our maintenance provider. Let's talk about max cruise power setting, and I know that a lot of people, uh, when we talk about uh, maximum cruise power setting, they uh, uh, can't find it in the pilot's operating handbook, or they're looking for a page that maybe says max cruise power setting. In this particular example, uh, in a uh, Beechcraft Bonanza A36 in section 5, you'll see some of the engine limitations there, and you'll see a chart that I've cut and pasted into the presentation so that we could talk about that. Now, uh, Beechcraft has always been in Celsius, so uh, the 20 degrees Celsius rich of peak exhaust gas temperature you can do the math, but it's somewhere probably 50, 55. I don't know. I didn't do that for uh, tonight. I guess I could take my calculator and, 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 and uh, figure it out. But it is in, uh, in Celsius, so make sure that you understand that, that it's in Celsius. So we're a little further uh, from peak uh, in F. Uh, but maximum cruise power setting is uh, 25 inches or full throttle and 2,500 RPM. The reason we say full throttle, if you're at, uh, I don't know, eight, nine, ten thousand 10,000 feet, you'll be full throttle and your manifold pressure will be uh, so, certainly below 25 inches and you will be below the max cruise power setting. And I'm going to show you that in a power chart that was developed by Continental when we did those, uh, those detonation tests. But you can see that in this power chart for a given uh, uh, pressure altitude and standard day and then uh, uh, different temperatures at different altitudes, what the manifold pressure and fuel flow uh, should be at a given uh, RPM. And, and those are uh, limitations. If this, if this chart did not have maximum cruise power setting at the top of the chart, which some of the old manuals for Beechcraft in Cessna, they don't say max cruise power setting. All they have is a, uh, a maximum uh, manifold pressure and RPM. Now, in this particular case, everything to the left is set at 2,500 RPM. I cut and moved that over so we could see it a little better because it wouldn't fit on the page. But all, everything that you see in the left-hand side is predicated on 2,500 RPM, and then it has a manifold pressure. So we can see that in all of the charts, the maximum cruise power setting, if, if, if the label wasn't there, there's nothing higher in the chart than 2,525. That, whether, whatever airplane you fly, whatever the top of that chart is, the maximum manifold pressure and RPM that they're giving you for a cruise power setting and fuel flow that is max cruise power setting. And so make sure that you, a, lot of, a lot of manuals that you look for, you will not see that specific terminology, but you will see a maximum manifold pressure and RPM. Sometimes it just disappears off the chart. So it's 25, or if it's a turbocharged engine, maybe it's 32 inches or 33 inches or something like that, and it doesn't go any higher. And you can assume and you can take, take for granted that that is the maximum recommended cruise power setting as tested both the engine manufacturer and uh, the airframe manufacturer. And that goes for uh, those of you who out there that may fly uh, uh, light coming engines. Now we move this next slide is recommended cruise power setting, but it's 20 degrees lean of peak EGT. That's where Beechcraft has determined that in the A36, this is where we're going to be most efficient. Remember last week we talked about the brake-specific fuel consumption curve. The lower the number for brake-specific fuel consumption, the more efficient we are. Now, you can run way lean to peak, and you'll save, you're going to burn less fuel, but you're not at the most efficient place to run the engine. A lot of people are running their engine worried about uh, uh, cylinder head temperatures. Well, I read on a blog that 380 degrees is really where I ought to target. So they're managing their engine based on a cylinder head temperature. 
And, and in doing so, you could be getting into a position where you're not as efficient as you could be. You're not at the bottom of the brake-specific fuel consumption curve. And I'll show you that when we get to the chart uh, here in a minute. But in this particular case, it says recommended cruise power settings. And again, it's a 25-inch and 2,500 RPM. What this tells me as a pilot, when I look at this chart, is it 25-25, or which that works out to be about 78% power, which we'll look in the next slide about how to calculate percent power. You don't, you don't have to calculate percent power. All you have to know is the manifold pressure and the RPM combination uh, that gives you a percent power. But in this particular case, we can run 20 degrees Celsius lean of peak exhaust gas temperature at these power settings. And Beach has set some fuel flows and indicated air speeds that one would probably find in running the airplane at those altitudes and those temperatures and those power settings. Do want to caution everyone out there about uh, engines that, uh, particularly the 550Bs and the uh, 550Ns and some of those engines, uh, caution you about running less than 2300 RPM. Running your engine less than 2300 RPM can be very, very damaging to the engine. Um, we, we did durability testing at those specific uh, RPMs. Uh, however, what we found, and in, in, in this I blame on the price of aviation gasoline, many pilots are out there looking for ways to extend range and burn less fuel. And uh, many of those engines at 2100 RPM, we start to approach the natural resonant frequency of the crankshaft. And that can excite the torsional dampers, or what we refer to as counterweights, even though they have nothing to do with rotational balance. It's all about uh, uh, taking out unwanted torsionals. Uh, we have to be very, very careful uh, in operating an engine at at a square manifold pressure being like 21, 21 or over square condition, that can excite those very, very greatly to the point where they can damage the counterweights. And in some cases, we've had a counterweight release. So we published a bulletin. Again, it's available on our website. If you go to our website, go to service bulletins, click on the service uh, bulletin index and search by keyword, just check. If you're in question about that, just type in minimum cruise RPM and you can read the bulletin for yourself and see if your particular engine in your airplane uh, may be affected. But I do just a word of caution, a little side note, I'm, I wanted to mention that. I was very instrumental in, in the developing of that bulletin. Uh, and it is real. If you want to talk with us uh, in detail, you can call us at Tech, tech Support, and we can uh, talk in more detail about why we don't want to run those engines below 2300 RPM. So pick a manifold pressure and RPM setting that's going to give you at least 2300 RPM and a manifold pressure that's not exceeding the um, uh, maximum recommended cruise, and then you have nothing to worry about with the red knob in damaging your engine. Again, we're tested for durability and we're tested uh, against detonation. Uh, flight check limits. Let's, we're talking about the IO550B. This is a table out of the uh, excerpt for the operations and installation manual for the IO550 engine. And there's many models down there. But we'll talk about the IO550B since we're picking on all of you out there that uh, fly uh, bonanzas. The full throttle speed is 2700 RPM. The idle speed is 600 RPM. And notice the unmetered fuel pump pressure is 8 to 10 PSI. That's the idle pump pressure. That's just what's coming out of the pump. And that has to be set within those parameters. Do not let a mechanic tell you that that doesn't need to be done. Don't let anybody tell you that that doesn't need to be checked, at least at each annual. Don't let anybody tell you that, hey, you just bought that new fuel pump or you just bought that new engine from Continental Motors. They set it up at the factory, nothing to worry about. Remember in the previous webinars, if you attended, 
we talked about the importance of those pressures being set correctly and they have to be checked and reset by your mechanic with calibrated gauges. Makes no difference that you've just spent $10,000 on the latest and greatest engine monitor that's calibrated by NASA. We have to check and cross check against other calibrated gauges to ensure that we have the fuel pump pressure. And the reason I mention this tonight is this is very vital in setting these pressures correctly before we can even begin to talk about Lena Peak and, and, and operating our engines. So make sure if you've got a fuel injected Continental that your unmetered, just talk to your mechanic. Are you setting my unmetered fuel pump pressure? And are you setting my uh, full power fuel uh, pressure, which is 16.5 to 18.4 in the IO 550B, and that's actually the target. Your mechanic also should be tar targeting the low side of, of the uh, unmetered fuel pump pressure from 8 to 10. If I was setting up an aircraft here tonight, I'd target 8 pounds on the, uh, on the uh, pump pressure, and I would target 18.4 on the high uh, fuel pump pressure. And that, that allows the engine to accelerate and have good response within the mid-range. But these are limitations. Notice that the cylinder head temperature is 460 degrees. We don't want to run our engines at 460 degrees, but our cylinder head temperatures that consistently bump 400 degrees does not mean that it's the end of the world. Yes, there is a, a detriment to the strength of aluminum at 380 degrees. I cannot argue that, but when, when we as engineers here designed the engine, we took into the account the strength of materials and built the cylinder accordingly. So uh, uh, cylinders that, that bump 400 degrees, it's not the end of the world. A lot of times it could be fuel system calibration that just talked about the, the pump pressures. That might not be set right. Or it could be baffling or what have you. But most Continental engines should run smoothly both best power and lean of peak at cylinder head temperatures of 400 or less. And if it's not doing it, it's, it's not necessarily the end of the world, but if, you, if you've seen it, something change, you've seen it lower than that, then perhaps uh, you want to get your mechanic involved and make sure that, you, uh, uh, that you're checking that uh, with him. More engine specifications. I recommend that all of you look at those. Uh, in your either your pilot's operating handbook or if you have a Continental engine, you can go to our website and you can go to the operations specifications that we publish. Uh, again, the pilot's operating handbook is the trump card. That is the most, that is the higher type certificate holder. That's the, the Bible. That's what you should use uh, for, uh, for operating your airplane and your engine. But you can learn a lot about your engine by just going to the operation specifications that Continental uh, publishes. Another thing, because uh, uh, a lot of these questions, a lot of these questions that we get on the tech support line, a lot of the questions that we get uh, when we're at shows and, and flying with people, I fly with a lot of customers and, and, and we, we do engine management practices. A lot of times when we install an engine for a customer at our, at our uh, uh, Continental Motor Services across the bay that you've heard me mention from the factory. Uh, a lot of times myself or another pilot, uh, after the break-in flight and we're, we're, everything's set, and we go fly with the customer and, uh, and we do that and we review uh, all, all of these uh, parameters with the customer. So you can learn a lot uh, just by going to our website and looking at that data. Engine performance, uh, we talked about last week about the, the maximum recommended cruise and in the uh, IO550N, it's actually 75% uh, power. This is a IO550B and if you look at that chart, you'll see starting from the bottom, you'll see two, three lines that are the best economy fuel mixture and that's at 78% and then the best power mixture is at 78%. So this chart is telling us that the maximum recommended cruise is 78%, that I can do whatever I want with the red knob. 
Notice the other two lines at the top are the full rich limits, and they run all the way up to 300 horsepower. And you, but, but look how fat the fuel is. On the left-hand side, there's a lot of fuel flow, so it's keeping the engine nice and cool and protecting it against the, the uh, uh, prospect of detonation or something like that occurring. So even in this chart, we can see what uh, be, uh, best economy, best, uh, best power, and also uh, what max cruise power setting is. Uh, <coughs> excuse me. And you can see that, it, that I've already plotted the 78% uh, the there. And if you look at the horsepower curve, the manifold pressure and RPM that we get to, to do that results in about 235 horsepower is where we get 78%. That's easy to calculate. You just look at a chart and okay, at the, at the maximum recommended cruise, which in this case would be 2525, I can go to this chart and I can see at maximum recommended cruise I'm developing 235 horsepower or thereabout and divide, um, uh, to, uh, take 230 horsepower divided by 300, which is the maximum uh, continuous uh, horsepower, and you get 78.333 or whatever the, the decimal is. Uh, on percent power. So again, you pick a manifold pressure RPM combination in a chart uh, that can give you a horsepower, and you can easily calculate percent power. You don't have to do it. We just talk about it. When we're talking about engine management, we use we talk about either uh, a percent power, uh, but, but you can talk the same language with a manifold pressure RPM and fuel flow limitation. There is no difference it's just when we talk about 78%, we're, we're already done the math and we figured what the horsepower is. Notice that, that at 235 horsepower, the engine is not going to be um, uh, developing uh, uh, all of its rated power. It's down on power. Also, uh, when we uh, set 78% or 2525 in the case of an L550B and we lean to best power, we're going to gain power. We're going to, we're going to be producing more than 235 horsepower. If we set 78% power and we go Alina Peak, we're going to be producing less than 235 horsepower because we're going to be robbing the engine out of, of some fuel and that takes energy away. We'll talk about that in just a second when we get into the uh, simulator. We'll talk about that in a little more detail. But I just want to make sure that we're not confusing percent power uh, or anything like that. Basically, we're talking about a manifold pressure and an RPM. Go back to the old chart uh, for a moment. In this slide, I want to talk about just the basics of engine management again uh, as we go through it. And then in the next few slides, we're going to kind of plot what's happening in that. And then I want to take this chart and we'll incorporate it into the uh, Lena Peak simulator. But this, I think, is a very simplistic way to talk about engine management. It's a simplistic way to view it, um, and, uh, and, and we, we came up with this uh, to try to make engine management easy, not to overcomplicate it. You know, you could, somebody could probably do a PhD dissertation on, on uh, piston engine aircraft management uh, and flight management. But I, I think we've made it uh, very, very complicated. I'm not sure that it needs to be that complicated. In this chart, though, the top line is the exhaust gas temperature. The blue line is the cylinder head temperature. We have the horsepower curve next uh, in the uh, brown. And then in green is what we call the BSFC, or the brake specific fuel consumption. The lower we are on that curve, the more efficient we are in the airframe combination in that we're getting the most out of a given volume of fuel. So let's talk about what happens when we start to lean. When we run an engine full rich, let's say for takeoff, whether it's fuel injected or carbureted, it doesn't matter, the uh, horsepower is not at the top. We're not developing all the horsepower that we can. We could lean the engine and get a little more horsepower. We could lean to best power. And in some high altitude airports, we're asked to do that in our pilot's operating handbooks. But we can do it because we're at a high altitude airport and 
our manifold pressure is lower, so we're, we can lean the engine without any risk of detonation. But let's say we're just at a sea level airport. This is what's going on in an engine during takeoff. The EGTs are cool. They're cool because we have a lot of fuel. The CHTs are cool because the EGTs are cool, and again, we have a lot of fuel. Horsepower, not all that the engine can develop. We're robbing a little horsepower from the engine because we're protecting it with uh, an abundance of fuel. We're excessively rich. We don't want to be so rich that the engine doesn't make rated power for takeoff, but we want it to be rich enough to protect us against detonation and engine damage. And you can see that the brake specific fuel consumption curve, we're way up on that, so we're not very efficient. If you flew around like this all the time, you would burn a lot of gas. And if your wife and, or, or uh, husband, like my wife, uh, she wouldn't like it when she got the fuel bill at the end of the month. So we, don't, we want to run in an area where we can get a little more economy out of these engines. So we start to lean. When we lean, we can go fast. We can choose that we want to go fast. In, a, uh, in, in the Stearman this afternoon, I could lean to best power when I got the maximum amount of, of RPM and the maximum uh, uh, engine speed. Uh, but it drinks a lot of fuel there, so I run it at a much leaner power setting. If you've got a fast airplane, you've got a Bonanza, a Baron, or a Cirrus, or a, a Cessna airplane that's designed to go fast, sometimes you may choose this power setting. It's best power. It is exactly what it says. It's giving the maximum twist on the crankshaft, it's giving the maximum thrust, and should result in the highest indicated airspeed. Now, I'm giving you some generalities here, but in most continental engines, best power is found between 75 and 100 degrees rich of peak exhaust gas temperature. That's in most continental engines. Your pilot's operating handbook will tell you exactly where to run, uh, but I'm giving you a generality here. Look what's happened to the horsepower. As we lean to best power, it's at the top of the curve. It's at the top of the apex there. And so we're developing the most power that we can. And the brake-specific fuel consumption has started down because now the engine is becoming extremely efficient for a given volume of fuel. We keep leaning. And I know many of you out there know what peak EGT is. But believe it or not, I do talk with a lot of people that don't understand what is peak and how we find it. We keep running the red knob out. We keep leaning the engine or pulling back on the red knob, and we go through peak EGT. That's the point where continued turning of the knob or pulling of the knob backwards, leaning it, will result in a lower exhaust gas temperature. Most, and, and, and again, we don't, uh, Continental Engines does not, we do not publish a maximum EGT. We don't publish a recommended EGT. We don't, re we don't publish uh, uh, any of those limitations. Peak uh, is the limitation. Now, if you fly a turbocharged engine, we do reference a turbine inlet temperature maximum setting, but that is predicated on turbocharger limitations and not on exhaust gas temperature limitations. So that's how we find peak. And when we find peak, things start to happen pretty dramatically as we continue to lean. As you notice, that those curves are not necessarily bell-shaped. So as we lean in this, we've gone now to what we call best economy, or we're lean of peak. The EGTs are starting, exhaust gas temperatures are starting to fall. Engines running cooler. The cylinder head temperatures are coming way down. And look, look what's happened to horsepower. Horsepower has tapered off. We've taken fuel away from the engine. So horsepower is taken off. And But look where we are on the brake-specific fuel consumption curve. We are at our maximum efficiency for that engine. Now, again, this is a generality, general term. In most continental engines, it's found somewhere between 25 and 50 degrees lean of peak. Your engine should run 50 degrees lean of peak and not, not vibrate and not run rough, be very stable, and your, your um, 
cylinder head temperature should remain below 400 with no problem whatsoever. If you don't, you may have a problem with fuel injection, you may have a problem with baffling, or something of that nature. So get your mechanic to check that, or call us here at the factory and we'll work with you and get it set so that you're not damaging that engine. It is important to us that you get the maximum out of your Continental engine, and we're here to help you do that. So that's how we find uh, best economy. Keep in mind that you have to look at your particular engine and your particular airframe uh, combination, your pilot's operating handbook, to determine where to run. If you have a Cessna 402 out there, um, and, and somebody here, here tonight may, you'll note that in your pilot's operating handbook, your best economy in a TSI 520 Victor Bravo, which is the engine in a 402, is to run it at peak exhaust gas temperature. So it depends on the engine model, but again, generality here, most Continental engines, it's found between at 50 degrees lean peak. So I'm going to go back to the simulator, and we'll talk about that. Let me flip back to it here. I'm having a little technical difficulty, folks. Sorry about that. And I'll open this up. And again, this is our throttle over here. This is our mixture control. And I'll click on the red box, and I'll identify best power and best economy. Again, to review, up here is the horsepower. This is a IO550N. I have swapped gears on you. Uh, we're not talking about a B anymore. We're talking about 310 horsepower. Uh, IO550N that you find in a Cirrus SR22. This is the first uh, simulator that we did. We are develop, the, de developing them for all of our engines and, uh, and uh, hopefully we'll have one for your particular engine that you, can, uh, that you can use. This is horsepower up here. This is brake specific fuel consumption. And remember, the lower the number, the more efficient we are with the engine. These are exhaust gas temperatures over here, one through six. These are cylinder head temperatures over here, one through six. This is our power, and it's in percent, and our fuel flow in gallons per hour. Now, if I want to lean this engine by the book and by continental recommendations, I will set maximum cruise power setting, which in a um, IO 550N is 70, excuse me, 75 percent power, and you can see that the red box is in hardly in any existence. It doesn't exist, and so anything that I do with the red knob now I'm starting to lean. Anything I do going through that area there between best power and best economy, right here being peak exhaust gas temperature. There's nothing that I can do with that red knob that will damage that engine. Not at all. But again, we set, we, we, we level off, we've set power. We're at 70% power, I'll just leave it set there. Watch what happens to the horsepower as I begin to lean. I'm starting to lean, I'm starting to lean, the horsepower is going up. I'm taking fuel away, but the horsepower is actually going up till I arrive at Best power. We talked about what best power is. That's the maximum twist on the crankshaft. That should result in the highest airspeed. Look at the brake specific fuel consumption. It's 0.45. Engine is starting to become efficient. Uh, and our uh, CHTs are in the 350, 360, 370. 375 looks like the maximum that we do. But let's say now we won't want to go there. We want to save a little more fuel, so we'll continue to lean through here. We can dilly-dally all we want. Not going to hurt the engine to run it here. Uh, and we find best economy. And at best economy, we're now in a 0.40 or 0.39 brake-specific fuel consumption. Horsepower has come down. CHTs are cool. And... And again, now we can go far, and we're at the bottom of the brake-specific fuel consumption curve. We're actually 
uh, as efficient as the engine combination can be. Now, but people, people out there right now are thinking, but Bill, I, 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 can, I can run there. I've heard about this big pull. Uh, they tell me that the most efficient they being the, what, you know, uh, the Internet forums, uh, advanced pilot seminars. Advanced pilot seminars is a great class, and I encourage uh, all of you out there that can go to do it, either take the online class or the uh, class in Ada, Oklahoma. They really do a great job in teaching you how to manage the engine. It's not just leaning the engine, but it's actually managing the engine. And myself and all of the uh, uh, technical service reps here at Continental have been there. I can't advocate you to run the engine that way, but I am going to demonstrate what we call the big pull so that everybody understands why it's important to pull and to pull quickly if you're going to run outside of engine limitations. And let me be, let me be clear and, and, and play the tape. I'm not advocating that you run here. I'm only demonstrating it that if you're going to, you need to be very careful. So many of, the, many of these proponents of this operation, they want you to run at 100% power, just keep the throttle wide open. And, and, and again, you may be 100% power uh, or, or wide open throttle, excuse me, wide open throttle at 8, 10,000 feet, and this is a moot point. This is only for times when you're at a low altitude, you've got the throttle wide open and you're above maximum cruise power setting or you're flying a turbocharged engine and you're at altitude and you're flying above max cruise power setting, the big pull is exactly what it is. We start to pull, you can start to see the horsepower going up, the EGTs are going up, the CHTs are coming up. We're getting here to best power right in here in this area here where I've got the line. You see the line moving there. That is an area of extreme uh, danger that can uh, on a hot day could detonate the engine and could damage it. So if I'm flying the engine and I want to get there very quickly, I'm going to do the big pull. I'm going to pull to a fuel flow, which I know 19.4 uh, in this case gets me on the lean side of the peak, and I did it that quick. See, I'm at 28.9, and I just note, okay, I need to be quickly at 19 so gallons. I'm lean a peak. Now I, can, now I can set the engine up and, and management, manage it. Uh, if I, you know, I can find, uh, maybe go back and find peak real quick, or maybe I've flown so much I'm, I'm just comfortable at a 19 uh, an hour uh, fuel flow. But look at the horsepower. I'm still going pretty quick. Uh, be very, very cautious if you employ this method. It's uh, very, very dangerous to be pulling through this area you never want to dwell uh, in this area. And that's why Continental doesn't advocate it, because we can't guarantee what's going to happen right here. Uh, you know, do you get an ATC reroute? Do you get in the back seat, gets upset, pinching his sister? I don't know. Anything can happen. You all are pilots, you understand things can happen. We get distracted, and we never want to dwell in this area. So if you're going to run that way, you need to be trained uh, on how to do it and to do it well. For those of you who, who, who don't want to do that and you want to follow the directions in the POH for durability and for detonation margin, then you need to run in this manner where you're reducing the power to the max cruise power setting, again, so that you have no danger of doing any detonation or any damage to the engine running within this area. It's very, very simple. And you know, the other thing we could do is we could uh, set a maximum cruise power setting in the most sophisticated of airplanes. And we could, uh, once set, we could not look at engine monitors and things like that, and we could lean to the engine starts to be a little rough, starts to bump, and then we increase the mixture until it runs smooth, and that's generally where we find best economy. Most of us that learned to fly in Cessna 172s and 152s, that's how we leaned. By the way, I lean the Stearman all the time when I'm flying it. I could be flying at 500 feet or 1,000 feet, I'm leaning the airplane. And so I encourage you to do the same thing. You don't have to be 
um, necessarily at at, um, at at altitude to to lean. Another thing that I'm asked a lot is, Bill, uh, can I lean in the climb? There's people there are people out there that do lean a peak climbs and things like that. We don't recommend that. The only thing that we can uh, and do allow is that if you uh, when you take off, you note what your average EGTs are, and let's say they're uh, 1,000 degrees, just pick a number, and you climb and you notice that they're tending down. Again, we're at full rich, we're at full throttle. It's okay to lean the engine to the exhaust gas temperature that you, that you noted on the takeoff roll. So you can lean to 1,000 degrees and you'll be fine. You'll save a little fuel, uh, reduce carbon deposits in doing that, uh, but again, don't lean any more aggressive uh, than that. And, uh, and you'll be fine. I'm going to go back to the presentation now. Again, leaning, if you have a multi-point exhaust gas temperature, if you want to find best power, it's the first cylinder, the peak, is your benchmark. So we'll talk about technique a little bit. So I'm flying along. I've got a multi-point EGT. I just got that installed in my airplane. I'm going to lean. I want to go fast, okay? I've got young children in the back of the airplane, and I'm late for vacation or whatever. I want to go fast. The first cylinder to peak, you note that, that controls, you find peak, and you enrich in 75 or so, should say 75 to 100. That's general terms in a continental engine is where you find best power. So the first cylinder to peak, controls that. So first cylinder peak, go 75 rich on that one. If it's number two, that's your benchmark, and you go 75 rich on number two. If it's best economy, lean a peak that you want to run, then it's the last cylinder that peaks is what controls it. So you keep leaning, keep leaning to the last cylinder that peaks, and then go 50 degrees, lean a peak here. Again, general terms, generalities for continental engines. It's not it's not rocket science. It's uh, I mean it can't be because they gave me a pilot's license. Uh, it's it's very easy to do, uh, and and it's not not hard uh, at all. Um, I think it's been overcomplicated. Single point EGT. Those of you who have just an e one EGT gauge, my dad's airplane that I flew up here this evening back to work to to do the uh, the webinar has a single point EGT. So if I want to fly best power back uh, to to my hangar where there um, uh, there's a keg of beer waiting, I would uh, fly best power. So I'll lean to peak exhaust gas temperature, and then I'll enrich into about 100 degrees rich at peak, and that ensures that I don't have any uh, that I'm that I've got don't have any cylinders that are running at peak or or beyond. So I'm I'm a little fatter. I'm not as efficient maybe with a single point EGT. Best economy, I'll lean to lit peaks and then I'll lean to 75 lean a peak with a smooth running engine. And uh, again, uh, protecting the engine uh, with a little with a little uh, leaner mixture so they don't have anything that's just sitting there dwelling at peak. I'm going to talk about just a, a minute about product support and uh, and factory service, and then I'll be I'll take uh, questions uh, at the time. Uh, tonight, uh, again, we have a lot of people here at Continental Motors that are well, well trained and ready to help you in any way that you can. As I stated, we'll fly with you, uh, we'll come to you, we'll fly with you, we'll train you. you. I mean, however you want to do it, if you want to bring your airplane here, we do it all the time. And, uh, and our goal is to help you and help you save uh, money. Again, uh, Continental Motors Services. Uh, our aircraft management, we're doing extreme um, uh, uh, leaps and bounds with that. We're, we're really, uh, that's really taken off. It's a really good service to our customers. We can manage the whole aspect of aircraft ownership, uh, take care of the engine and make sure that you're they're operating it correctly and that the uh, required maintenance is doing uh, being done. So you, use us if you need to. Uh, we, you've all have heard of Mattituck. We closed Mattituck in New York. We moved it to Fairhope, Alabama, and we do both 
Lycoming and Continental Engine Overhaul. So uh, go to our website and, and give us a shout if you want to use that. If you've got cylinders that need repair, we can also do that at Continental Motor Services. Doesn't matter what who makes them, we can uh, we can repair them. We right now we're working on a one to two day turnaround time. In fact, we got a cylinder in on Monday at uh, 10 o'clock and 4:30. It was uh, headed out the door back to the customer. Diesel engine center. You know, Continental is working on diesel uh, engines, and we are the center installation center in the United States for that. If you're if you're looking at a a conversion for a Cessna 172, it's certainly something uh, that we can do, have done and, and can do. Avionics, we're covering that too now, and that's another uh, uh, item that we're doing uh, now. Factory direct engine sales, you can call us there at 877-777-1870 and you can talk to an engine expert um, that can help you with those engine solutions. Any parts that you need, ignition systems, airframe, what well, doesn't matter, we've, we've got it in stock and uh, should have it in stock. Uh, we we have, a, uh, have really increased our inventory and response time uh, to our customers. So again, give us a call uh, if there's any way at all that we can help you. And our website at, gen at continentalmotors.aero is the, uh, uh, a plethora of information. And I recommend that you guys uh, out there, if you, if you need uh, assistance, give us a call at Tech Support or if you want to uh, peruse our, our website and look for technical data, we encourage you to do that as well. So, Jeff, thank you again for tonight. I, I know I probably went over a little bit, but it's a very important topic, very dear to me. Um, trying to cram it all in in, in an hour uh, but uh, or less, but uh, at this time, I will be glad to take uh, any questions. Thanks so much, Bill. I really appreciate it. And of course, it's, it, it's another fantastic uh, you know, educational evening on, on all of these. You know, one of the questions that we get quite a bit here has to do with uh, turbo engines. And if you could uh, talk a little bit about what the implications are for tonight's presentation when, it, when, when, you, know, when you deal with uh, turbocharged engines, I think that would be helpful for everybody. Yeah, it's a good, that's a good point, Jeff, and, uh, and I'm glad that we're talking about that because when we go back in, uh, and I'm going to go back just a few slides, so that we can talk about turbo in, turbocharged engines in just a moment. It is very important that um, in, in this best economy slide, is, as you note, in a turbocharged engine, as you pull fuel away, you can see that the horsepower has dropped off. And there are people that employ a technique to open the throttle to recapture that uh, lost power. If you do that, uh, you can quite likely be running the engine uh, above max cruise power setting. Remember, it's all about the starting point. Whether you fly a turbocharged engine or normally aspirated, your max cruise power setting is where you want to start. If you go to best power, you'll develop more power. If you go to best economy or lean peak, you're going to develop less power. And I think where the controversy starts, Jeff, with a lot of this is that uh, People really want to do both. We want to go fast and we don't want to burn any gas. And, and, and I'm here to tell you tonight, that's hard to do. That is hard to do. It is tempting to do it with a turbocharged engine, but you need to be very, very careful. You can get into severe detonation uh, uh, issues with a turbocharged engine if you're not careful in running above max cruise power setting or trying to capture back this drop. If you're looking at my mouse there on the screen, this drop in horsepower, trying to capture that back with the throttle, again, uh, you're opening opening up a can of worms, perhaps for uh, for durability and, and detonation margin. Yeah, and I think you know one of the things that you pointed out there that's that's incredibly important and, and seems to to be something that not a lot of people really understand uh, from from some of the conversations I have is that concept that as you can continue to lean that, that you do lose that efficiency. That just because that um, you're, you're seeing that uh, the fuel flow drop, it's not necessarily a good thing. Yeah. That's correct. In fact, uh, and I didn't mention it, I'm glad that you mentioned that, but again, looking at my mouse, that, that bottom of the apex there at the bottom of the uh, brake specific fuel consumption curve, that's where we're most efficient. But if I lean, if I could draw this chart, if you look at my mouse, that, that line is almost going straight up. So if you're, if, and people say, well, gosh, 380 
uh, cylinder head temperature is where that I read that on the on the blog. That's where I should run. Well, at 380 is where he says maybe I ought to shoot for 350 because that's better. And so when you pull the engine, you pull more fuel away from the engine, you're starting to become grossly inefficient. And by the way, folks, you need to be cognizant of oil temperature. If you're if you're if you're very very concerned about cylinder head temperature and keep pulling fuel away, you could quite likely get into a situation where the engine's not developing enough heat, and and you may have cold oil temperature, and that can lead to a host of, of problems with regards to oil temperature uh, and corrosive attack. So, so yes, Jeff, that's a very good point, and I didn't mention that tonight, but as you lean past that best economy area, the engine does become grossly inefficient. And Bill, um you know, another one of the topics that, that tends to come up is a lot of the uh, people that are using STC to do modifications on those aircraft, and uh, whether it be an exhaust modification, ignition modification, or anything along those uh, lines, including turbo normalization, mm -hmm. and understanding what the implications are of tonight's presentation regarding that, which I'm going to guess is, is, is really that the, the rule holds. Is that the case? Yes, it does. In fact, uh, whatever modification you've done to your airplane, uh, there are turbo normalizing modifications that are very successful. Uh, I, there are some supercharged modifications out there that I I I've, I, uh, I don't think are are, are a good idea. Uh, belt driven superchargers, things like that. But if you modify your engine, if you put high compression pistons in it because you you know you want more power and all this stuff. If whatever you do, if you modify that engine outside of type design from either Lycoming or Continental, makes no difference. You need to be sure that you have a pilot's supplement to your aircraft and that you're managing the aircraft engine in accordance with that pilot supplement. And if none is, if, if there is none provided, if you ask the question at Oshkosh or Sun and Fun or wherever you are and the guy's trying to sell you something, you need to ask yourself the question, if he doesn't have a pilot supplement, do I really want to put that on my engine? And, and so be very, very careful with that. If there's any modification whatsoever, there should be a pilot supplement. And sometimes in experimental aircraft, uh, there is no flight manual. And in those cases, Jeff, we, uh, there has to be some interpolation that's done with the operations manual the Continental provided, and then the, the owner is, is the builder of the aircraft does some of the flight testing, and he can find where best economy and best power and things like that lie within his airframe and engine combination. Right. So, Bill, thank you so much again. Uh, another wonderful educational presentation this evening. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, this is a, a very special part of what we do here at Social Flight, the idea that we can bring everyone together in a virtual manner even when uh, they're not just going out flying and enjoying for regular events. And so this is part of an ongoing series, and I would encourage everyone to please uh, to get the Social Flight free app, check it out, take a look at all the different options to participate in general aviation and help support this passion that we feel so strongly about uh, moving forward. Now, a recording of tonight's presentation will be available uh, via Social Flight tomorrow. Uh, it takes us about 24 hours to get that all set up. And uh, if anyone has any additional questions, uh, as uh, Bill has put up a slide here, there's ways to reach Bill and get his expertise on an ongoing basis. And so again, thank you all so much for your time, and happy flying. Take care. Thank you, Jeff. Good night.